Hi, I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What the Funk. In this video, I'm going to walk through how to use Foundry, a feature for feature rewrite of DAP tools in Rust. But first, if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe and to click that bell notification icon so you can stay up to date whenever I post a new video. Let's get started. So here in my browser, I have the Foundry repo pulled up on GitHub. If we scroll down to the README section, you can see that Foundry actually has two parts to it, Forge and Cast. Forge is what you're going to be using to build, compile, and test your smart contracts, whereas Cast is just a very useful command line utility for interacting with the Ethereum blockchain and your smart contracts. If you scroll down a little bit further to the Forge section, you can see a command. You can go ahead and copy and paste, and this will install the Forge command on your system. In my terminal, I've pasted the command. I can run it. And because I've already installed recently, it's not going to do anything. But if you're doing this for the first time, it may take a few minutes. You should also know for this to work, you need to have Rust installed on your system. You can go to the Rust official website to figure out how to install this for your particular system. In my terminal, I've already created a directory called Forge Demo. And in this directory, I'm going to run Forge init. This will go ahead and create a sample project for us. I can open it in VS Code. Now with VS Code open, you can already see that it's initialized a Git repo, created a few directories for us. In our source directory, we've got a sample contract that's empty and a sample test that has a test that really doesn't test anything. And we've also got a lib directory. This lib directory has some useful libraries a test library for some useful test utilities and a demo test that actually shows you how to use this test library. In order to test Forge, I've already gone ahead and copied and pasted a pre-written contract into our contract.sol file. And all this is is a counter that allows you to fetch the value of the current count incremented by one, decremented by one, and also increment it by a specific number. Right now our test isn't actually set up to test anything, so it will pass no matter what, but let's just go ahead and run in our terminal the forge test command just to make sure that tests are working. So to run tests, you just use forge test, and you can see that testing is actually working. So let's go ahead and write a few tests. So in our test file, I've gone ahead and imported our contract and then created a new private variable to hold the instance of our contract. And in the setup function, I've gone ahead and instantiated a new instance of our contract. With that out of the way, we can actually start creating tests and using our instance of our contract. In this first test, I test that when you increment the initial value, which would be zero, you should get the number one. And in the second test, uh, because we don't want to deal with negative numbers, uh, I've gone ahead and incremented twice and then decremented once in order to get the value one. So let's go ahead and run this test to see that everything works. We can go ahead and run forge test and everything works. And because forge is written in Rust, everything runs super fast. One feature that forge has that DAP tools also has is fuzzing. So you can create a test where forge will automatically input random values to try and make your test fail. So in order to demonstrate that, I've written another test. This test tests the uh, increment by number function. So basically Forge is going to input a bunch of random values and we want to make sure that whatever value Forge inputs is the number that we get when we fetch the counter variable from our contract. So let's go ahead and test that, run Forge test. And as you can see, it passes. And you can see right here that Forge actually runs this test 256 times, but it took less than a second to run all of those tests, which is kind of insane. And that's it. That's all it takes to get started creating, writing, and testing your smart contracts using Foundry. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.